Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with Zombieland Saga Revenge episode number 8. Alright, the previous episode we met a new character. She kind of got into the idol, like you know, into the Fan Shushu group as an idol. Her name was Mai Mai and it was a very short, like you know, her stay in the idol group was very short. But still, like she was quite, uh, you know, interesting character. She was very, like, straightforward, very, you know, uh, <clears throat> what can I say? Like, very bubbly, very, like, you know, happy, that type of a character, very positive. And um, she had her own thought about, like, you know, life. But after listening to Sakura and her, like, whole take on how they failed once and they want to do it again so that they don't became the, become the normal walking dead, you know? Like, as they said, as they said, like, you know, as Sakura said, like, if we do nothing, then we're just zombies. So, yeah, like, we should do, like, you know, whatever, uh, like, you know, the best we can do now. Uh, even more that we are zombies now. So, like, she understood that, like, life is something which is like no one knows how much someone will live so like you should probably like she, she understood that she should probably do something that she really wants to do that is like her ambition her goal whatever you call it so she decided to <clears throat> like you know retire on the first day and she decided to go on her own path find her own way and uh, like obviously she is like she's one of the biggest fans of Ran Shushu so I'm sure we'll get to meet her in the future I at least I hope so like you know as we see did the different fans of Ran Shushu in future episodes so yeah but anyways that was like a very like a nice episode um and uh, also by the end of it we also see the uh, other part of the show that is like the photographer like he found out that uh, like all of them are dead like it was only with the exception of number five that is i think yugiri so let's see what that is about as well so yeah without further ado let's get started with episode number eight of zombie land saga revenge all right so i'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here sync it to whichever is your preference and let's get started all right so here's the countdown three two one go Oh, I'm guessing we're going, we're going to see uh, Yugiri's backstory. I'm going to suck. Master Hibia. Okay. <clears throat> Hmm, wow. Damn. Legendary, yeah. Oh! Okay. I love the way they talk, you know, this kind of, uh, this, the way courtesans talk, like, it has like a real, what? Like, as I was saying, I really love the way, like, you know, there's like a particular way, the, uh, courtesans talk like it's like uh the way like you know ancient people talk not ancient as like yeah you know like people who are like you know of the older generation like in japanese like it has a really like you know what can i say like elegant vibe like especially the words how they flow and everything
So this episode will probably be Yugiri's story now. So I'm really like, you know, uh, what can I say? Like curious about how, like, you know, I think she is one of the biggest part of the actual Zombieland saga project. I don't know why, but there is something. Let's see, because like, I think she's, she's obviously one of the, what can I say? Uh, I'm not sure, like, but there's a little, like, you know, a lot of mystery surrounding her. Let's see. Spring of Meiji Saga Castle. Okay. Oh, is is did he did she relocate? Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Reluctantly left her. Oh, she he is no more. Oh. Yeah, no one's here. Oh, damn. What? Wait, wait, what is Sakura doing here? Wait a minute. Isn't that Kotaro's? Like Mamoru Miyano's? Yeah, that is Kotaro's voice actor, Mamoru Miyano. What is happening here? Wait a minute. Oh, oh damn, the fish. Wait, what? Oh, obviously, Junko can be here because she's one of the Showa idol eras. Um, Showa era idols. Momozaki Kichi. Is <laughs> that guy? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's that. <laughs> I'm guessing his ancestors are someone. Wait, are these all the ancestors? Or something? Let's see. Ito. Oh. During the reformation. Oh. Oh, okay. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, I was not expecting a, an episode like this. Hmm. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Oh no! Yeah, he ate it. <laughs> Okay, I'm I'm thinking they're using the, their character models. It's not that they're there, you know. Hmm. Wow. Oh, these are those, uh, what are these called? Pinwheels? Yeah, I think pinwheels, aren't they? Hmm. Oh! Whoa, what the? <laughs> okay. Wow, this is like Okay. <laughs> Whoa, look at the leg muscles! Whoa, what the? Oh! <laughs> Thank God he did not get isekai'd. <laughs> oh, Thai! Yo! Wait a minute. Is that Thai? Obviously that's not Thai. I'm guessing her ancestors or something? <laughs> okay. Oh, that's his, um... Thing. <laughs> Tissue paper. Okay. Okay, I might be wrong, but I'm guessing they're using the character models of all the characters we know, you know? It's not that they are here. As far as I can understand. That is still maiden. <laughs> Legendary. <laughs> you giddy. Price got sky high. Yeah, that's a really like Whoa <laughs> What? Yeah, that's legendary. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the Kotaro. <laughs> oh, he he came here. Okay. He's not getting the courage. Uh, oh, uh, Gong. <laughs> okay. For your sake. Uh, 
<laughs> oh damn, he he's overheating. Someone help him. <laughs> oh my god. Damn, he got overexcited. Okay, wow. Oh, who's this? Wait, he's eating the octopus thing. Oh no, it's that, not octopus, sorry, squid. Oh my god. Oh, he got a heat stroke. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Big battle. Hmm. Okay, so so he f uh, like you know it's not that they're blood related, but uh, <laughs> he's eating squid. Oh my god! Yeah, he himself is very committed to this as well. It's not that because of his grandpa, he himself wants that. So it's fate, yeah, really. I forgot the dog's name. What was his name? Create a new saga. Mm -hmm. I'm sure Kotaro is somehow related to him. Probably his descendants or something. Oh god. Oh! <laughs> Damn. Oh. Okay, Yugi is helping. Okay, I feel this guy has something. <laughs> oh, Lily and this <laughs> Okay, that's cute. Oh god, what is... Whoa! Wait, who is this guy? Wait, wait, what's happening? Okay, something's wrong here somehow. I don't...
What? Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait. Okay, calm down. Okay, wow. <laughs> he always. <laughs> oh God. I'm. I'm sure. I think he knows her somehow. Somehow related to that guy who brought her here. I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah. Two years. <laughs> Make fun of it. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Okay, well, still something about him. I'm not so sure. Like, it's probably some kind of a big shot. I'm not sure. Let's see. Oh, more people are, are okay. Wow, there you go. Yeah, there, this is a, a really weird type of atmosphere here. What the? Is he some kind of... Uh... Whoa, this, <laughs> this episode, damn, okay. Something bad's going to happen in the next episode, I can feel it. I feel like, obviously, like, I'm sure like everyone can feel that, that there's something wrong about that guy. Like either he is, a uh, Ah, uh, what can I say? Like, it's some kind of spy working for some kind of international group or something. I'm not sure. Like, he's probably someone who has some kind of a goal, which is not good in a way.
Like, you know, all of the secrecy and everything had the way he kind of tossed that little thing. So, like, that's why I'm saying, like, he's probably somehow related to some kind of spy, kind of, like, you know, spy or informant, something. No, I'm not sure. Maybe huh? some anti-nationals. I'm not, I'm not sure, but it's somehow related to, I think, something like that. You know what? Okay, uh, uh, okay, let's wait for it. All right, that's the end. You know what? This episode really, really reminded me of. It had a whole vibe of, like you know, um, ah, uh, Gintama. Like, like this whole thing really, like you know, reminded me of a certain arc in Gintama. It's been a while I've seen Gintama, so I, like you know most of the things are kind of hazy in my head so it had like a really big resemblance with one of the arcs in gintama where there's this courtesan and a person like who like you know loved each other but like you know they had to like you know the courtesan uh this like you know decided to wait for him and she grew old and the guy was doing like you know like you know was unable to meet her and the guy also became old and obviously like Gintoki by the end of it like they met each other and like this whole like you know like this episode really gave me the vibes of that like Gintama has a big portion of the whole you know the courtesan like you know um like the whole Kabukicho district and everything and the red light district and like all of these things like it, it has a like a whole th part of like Gintama a certain part of Gintama is full like you know is something like that like uh, like you know like uh it it has like the whole courtesan thing and there's there's certain arcs like i think the what was that called uh yeah there was a courtesan arc as well where we meet um oh god i forgot her name sukio sukio wasn't it her her name the um like who we meet like later on like that so like you know like obviously like this very much gave me that vibe like you know this whole type of like you know like uh this guy uh momo Mo what was his name momo okay i forgot <laughs> something with momo uh and i cannot find his name now anyways um i'm like you know I, okay i'm gonna call him momo <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm i cannot remember his name like you know like this whole thing like really reminded me of him you know and obviously yugiri as well in this kind of uh atmosphere and everything like it was really like what can i say uh a very nice episode but it also had a little bit of a uh, very like you know a uh, tense type of an atmosphere like especially towards the end now here's the thing um like obviously we can we know that like we can understand that yugiri is somehow related to ito and i'm guessing ito is maybe uh some kind of relative of the guy who brought yugiri here somehow related to <laughs> excuse me related to him ito like, i'm saying that because when he comes in like you know with that fish like you know like what does she actually say just a sec mm. okay uh okay he comes in yugiri is there and Yugiri <laughs> uses a chopstick and Yugiri is very surprised seeing him first of all now Ito smiles and says it's just some fish and I, I don't know like this conversation really like you know made at least I think makes me uh, think that probably he is somehow related to Yugiri by um, you know uh, by the guy who brought Yugiri here because it seemed as if like okay here it is yugiri says forgive me i felt a rather fresh presence okay um
Okay, uh, then Momo comes in and he says that uh, I'm late and then he says, oh, Ito, you're early. Now, I don't know, but either she, Yugi, she like, you know, Yugiri knows him somehow or like he is somehow related to the guy who brought Yugiri here. Either of that, I'm not actually sure, but it is something like that because their conversations and the way where they were talking with each other, especially after um, Momo falls asleep, you know, it seemed that they were like, you know, old acquaintances. Like their, like their conversation were going so smooth. It really like, you know, it, it shows that they are old acquaintances and, um, and yeah, now, first of all, I think like I thought maybe the, like, you know, this guy was somehow like, uh, who was going to like, you know, bring harm to, uh, someone, a person who was going to bring harm to Momo. Uh, okay. His, uh, Kichi is his name, isn't it? Yeah, Kichi. Okay. Uh, I, I thought like he was somehow someone who was probably going to bring harm to him because like, you know, uh, when Kichi told him about the whole, like, you know, Yugiri helped me the way his face kind of changed. Uh, I thought, oh my God, like, is he somehow going to harm him or something? But after we saw the conversation of him and Yugiri, I don't think that's the case. I think it's something different though. The way he talks about Kichi as well, like, you know, he says that, mm, oh, like, um, yeah, like, uh, I thought like, you know, I thought I saw like a fool in like in the middle of the street, kind of like, uh, like, you know, passing these, like uh, these, uh, uh, the, the brochures, the, those things, the handwritten things, like them passing them around, no one was listening to him. So I thought like, why don't I make some fun, you know, of him? But then, like, you know, he, the more he talked, the more he kind of, like, you know, like from his conversation, like, I could feel that he probably wants the best for Kichi. But I'm guessing his position is something which is probably going to be, a, um, what can I say, uh, probably going to harm Kichi in some way or, or do something like you know to hinder him that's why I think uh, Ito is not comfortable with it I don't know there is something like that most probably because uh, like it seemed as if ah, here we go now this line he says that um, just a sec mm. Sooner or later, that earnest heart, heart of his is going to get broken. This country is still too twisted, too barbaric. Now, this line, this really, I, I think like this is one of, another one of the points that really proves that he is somehow related to something which is not so good. And he probably wants the best for Kichi. But seeing Kichi doing stuff like this, he, I think he thinks that this will probably gather attention which is going to harm him in some way. Like, you know, maybe the officials, like, you know, the big shots of the country will get notified or something if, like, you know, if somehow Kichi's movement gets more, like, popularity. I don't know, like, maybe the uh, big shots of the country or something, they, like, this will be brought to their attention. And they'll like say that, oh, this is like, you know, like this is anti-nationalism, like arrest this guy or send him to the gallows or something like that. And I'm sure, I think probably he is somehow related to that, maybe a government official spy or something. Okay. It's the, the whole thing picture is probably forming in my head. Now, wait a minute. Just let me see one thing. Where did Yugiri go? Just a sec. Like which place? Just a sec. Okay, here it is. Uh, we see at, at the beginning of the scene uh, of the episode. Um, she says, I'm going to Saga. Right. It's where Master Hibia was born. His wife passed away a long time ago. So it should be a peaceful arrangement. It's a bit of relief up against someone like him. Even the big. There you go. Uh, up against someone like him, even the bigwigs couldn't make much of a fuss. 
he's got the wisdom and age on his side and i'm sure you i know better than okay like here it is they're saying that even the big wigs won't be able to tell something to him so that means this master hibia is someone who is somehow like some kind of a big shot now okay the, 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 everything is probably like yeah the picture is getting clearer now now i think what's actually happening here is this guy who is probably one of the big shots of uh the place that uh you know uh Yuguri went to that is the former saga like he's one of the government big shots i think now she went there and he died obviously like as we like listen like as we get to know after that and like Yuri was there alone and i think somehow like the guy ito is somehow related to him either uh, uh master hibia uh who knows maybe his nephew his cousin whatever i don't know or maybe he is also probably one of like you know one of the uh people who is related to the government jobs and everything so that's how he probably knew hibia uh, when hibia was alive so he's also someone from the government side now this thing where uh like like i might be wrong i'm i'm, I'm just like making an assumption here now actually what's happening here is like this guy he is kind of posing as a normal citizen you know in front of the whole like you know townspeople and everyone and but he's kind of acting as a government official a governmental spy now why is he doing that so that like no rebellious activities happen you know to keep an eye out on everyone this guy ito found um uh kichi in the streets and as he's kind of like said you know like i found him i thought maybe why i should make fun of him and then like then he like you know starts talking about his own point of view he says that the thing that he's doing is naive like you know like there are a lot of scum in this like you know in this country so like it his wish won't be fulfilled like he himself being the government official knows about all of these kind of like you know malpractices that are happening and he himself knows that like if he goes further like you know uh, kichi goes further than this his dreams will be crushed like you know it, it won't happen so that's why and now like you know he's also keeping an eye out like so that no rebellious activities happen or something you know and uh as a spy uh, a governmental spy now now that kichi is gathering attention you know of some other people are also people are coming out and saying that oh like uh, like i also wanted like you know want to uh, like get our older saga back and there were two people who came in the end i don't know i think maybe something like you know this is going to get to gather more attention and it's going to get to a point where the government won't sit like you know keep sitting down they're going to take action and that is probably somehow going to get related to ito like you know and like you know i don't know like i think this is going in a very bad direction i'm not actually sure but i think it is something like that i might be wrong you know this is a pure like guess guesswork that i'm doing but it feels as if it is something like that so yeah Okay, another thing I want to check out here is the actual uh, history, what they said. Mm, just a sec. At that time, uh, here it is. Saga was treated as a problem prefecture by the Meiji government. Oh, okay. Like, I, I have to check this portion again. I forgot what they actually said. Okay, a problem prefecture. During the Bakumatsu period, it underwent westernization faster than the other domains, making Saga a key location during the Reformation. But with uprisings by the former samurai class during Meiji 7 and the accompanying defeats, its glory was a thing of the past. Okay. By Meiji 9, Saga prefecture had been divided up between the prefectures of Mizuma and Nagasaki. Okay. So, like, the, the surrounding um, two... Uh, countries i'm guessing yeah they took like you know half half portions of saga and saga ceased to exist okay 
resulting in the total erasure of the map oh and by the end of it i can see that okay just a sec like fukuoka took a little no nagasaki and mizuma okay it had been divided into two and then in the next scene we see that nagasaki and uh, like fukuoka took the uh, like you know the other portion as well mm, just a sec Mi yeah mizuma's portion as well mizuma also ceased to exist didn't it yeah resulting in its total erasure from the map now only nagasaki and fukuoka is left here all right yeah okay i think it is something like you know what i what i thought about it like this is some kind of like the thing that kichi is doing is technically like you know unlock like you know it's against the law so because no one's paying attention to him people are like you know the governments are like, like not doing anything to him like you know even the police come like came to arrest him but like you know ito saved him because of that uh, from that but I'm guessing if he gathers more attention, this is going to get into a big problem. And that's probably what's going to happen in the next episode. Oh my god. Yeah, this... I think this is probably the first... Um, yeah, first. First Zombieland Saga episode. It had its funny portions, but it was very serious. Like, you know? And... Uh, yeah, like Yugiri's story is going to be pretty heavy, I think. Um, so let's wait for it. And uh, okay, and uh, obviously, like okay, so uh, another thing that I wanted to mention is the <laughs> characters we are seeing. You know, Sakura, Junko, I. Like, I'm guessing they are using their character models. Just like you know, it's not that it, it's like you know, it's not that they are here. Uh, neither are they I'm, I'm guessing they're not neither their ancestors uh, it's probably that they're just using their character models just that's just it because <laughs> like, you know seeing saki carrying lily i think i think they're using the character models I, i'm i doubt something like that is going to happen like you know has ever happened in the past you know uh, even if like you know if these are like the ancestors of them i doubt something like that happened <laughs> it, it's neither their ancestors nor what can i say like you know nor their um like you know it's not, neither their ancestors nor them it's just that they're using their character models for it i'm guessing someone is telling this story to someone you know like this whole recollection this is some kind of a recollection that's happening most probably in the next episode we're going to see like you know probably this is going to end this recollection and we'll see like somehow someone is actually narrating this story to someone and another thing that like i noticed here like obviously like the, as i said like they're using the character models and also um the voice actor of kichi is uh kotaro's voice actor mamoru miyano so that as well and uh yeah that was it like this is really great I, I i like you know this really gave me like uh, a whole like you know a lot of gintama vibes and gintama being one of the best animes to ever exist yeah like this this was really like you know kind of nostalgic in a way not nostalgic because it's not that uh, like i've seen gintama a long like you know a lot of years ago it's not that it's been probably three years i've seen gintama it has been three years so it's kind of making me nostalgic like you know i'm kind of remembering those episodes when i used to watch gintama like those were so good you know like if there's like an anime that like you know like there's like these kind of questions that people ask like if there's like an anime that you can probably forget erase from your memory and watch again what will that anime be i'll definitely answer gintama because Gintama is a masterpiece. Anyways, I'm, I'm going to a completely different show. But anyways, so yeah, like as I was saying, like this really gave me Gintama vibes and it re really made me like, you know, nostalgic. It reminded me of the times when I, like, you know, used to watch Gintama. I had a great laugh and like, you know, it was so good. So, yeah. So yeah guys that was it so that was uh, this episode this is uh, Zombieland Saga Revenge episode number 8 so yeah if you guys enjoyed my reaction be sure to press the like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed comment down below anything you want to say or anything you want to share I'll definitely check them out.
So yeah guys, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next week with another episode of Zombieland Saga Revenge. So until then, goodbye and have a nice day.